Hey guys, in this session we're going to be looking at rates of change. So what I've got here is a parabola. Um, it is a positive parabola, so I know that it's going to look something like this. Let me just grab a picture of this parabola. From 2D, yeah, there we go. No, oh, I want to insert that on page. Cool. So what um, really rates of change is, is looking at what's happening to the gradient at any given point. So if I want to know um, what's the rate of change for this um, graph at a particular point, I could actually ask that. Now just to keep in mind, all right, so this is something that you need to know. dy dx is the gradient function. Um, it's basically just having a look at um, how fast is, uh, at what rate is y changing as x changes so it's just another way of chain um, saying that it's just a differentiated um, function so if you look at um, the function here which is y equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 2 so if I differentiate that what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get 6x minus 12 all right so if I want to find the rate of change um, for this particular graph at the point uh, when x equals to 1 then all I need to do is I just need to substitute x equals 1 in the gradient function. So if I go dy dx is equal to 6 times 1 minus 12, this is going to give me negative 12. Now what happens if I actually put the 1 in the original y function? So it's like if I go uh, y is equal to 3 times 1 squared minus 12 times 1 plus 2, this is going to give me 3 minus 12 plus 2 which equals minus 7 so what I've discovered here is the actual point of 1 negative 7 so if you think about it 1 negative 7 is right there um, and if you think about the negative 12 the negative 12 is the rate of change when x equals to 1 in other words that negative 12 is the gradient at that point so a couple of things to notice is that when the rate of change is uh, positive, we can say that the rate is increasing. So it's pretty much very similar to what we did with increasing and decreasing functions. Uh, and dy dx, if it's negative, then we can say the rate is uh, decreasing. Okay. So what about when we look at um, kind of like real world problems, right? So what we could do is um, we could have something like an example like this, where a circle circle's area changes as its radius changes. So we can actually say that um, area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Then we want to know what is the rate of change when the radius is say for example 10 centimeters all right this is just a quick little question guys so all we really have to do is um, if we substitute 10 into this function what we're going to get is the actual area when the radius is equal to 10 centimeters but the question is actually asking what is the rate of change when the radius is equal to 10 so in other words, what we need to do is we need to differentiate dA dr uh, and then substitute r equals to 10 to find out the rate. And this is where people get confused the most because they see this 10 and they go, oh yeah, I can just put that straight in my area equation and I'm done. No, this is not measurement. Remember this. That's what you're doing at measurement level 1. At level 2 calculus, you're going to have to differentiate something and then substitute a value to actually try and figure it out. So we're going to differentiate the a equals pi r squared. But really, if you think about it, in the previous question, we had a something like this. We had a function of y equals to 3x squared minus 12x plus 2. What did we do then? We differentiated it to get dy dx. And so that's what we're going to do here. When it's a is pi r squared, dA over dr is going to equal 2 pi r. Okay, just to kind of reiterate that, um, because remember that r squared, you bring the power to the front and then take away one from the power. That is how you end up with 2 pi r. So at radius equals to 10, we can say that dA dr is equal to 2 times pi times 10 
which equals to 20 pi. Now here's another thing that's actually worth noticing. Um, I don't think you get pinned for um, units, but this is something that you can actually do as well. Think about it like this. Your area, in this case, is going to be centimeter squared. And then per radius is actually in centimeters. So what you can actually say is that the area is actually increasing uh, by 20 centimeters squared per centimeter. So at this um, at this point right there. So basically, guys, the idea behind it is that whenever you're working with rate of change questions, all you're really doing is you, it's no longer you're working with graphs, but rather working with like real life situations. So all you got to do is make sure you differentiate um, the function and then substitute the value um, and pretty much after that you get your rate of change now on the odd occasions you guys will be given the y value first like for example they could do a question like this where I'm gonna stick with that same example of area is equal to pi r squared they could ask you a question like um, what is da dr when the area equals um, I don't know 15 centimeters squared all right so in this case, what you have to do is, this case, you actually have to figure out what r is first. So you have to go and put 15 equals pi r squared, uh, and then work out what r is. So in this case, I'm gonna get r squared is equal to 15 over pi, and then r is equal to square root of 15 over pi. Then what I do is, once I get what this r value is, so r equals to that, uh, let me just write that a little bit clearer so I can just use this calculator so r is equal to square root of 15 divided by pi I'm gonna see if this actually works or am I gonna get a fail Ew. all right it does work so far r. so r is roughly 2.1851 so now what I would do is I would take this r here and I would actually substitute it instead of that 10. Um, well, might as well do it because <laughs> it's not really that much extra work because we know what DADR was. DADR was 2 pi r. So in this case, we're going to get 2 pi times 2.1851. Okay, so that should give us 4.3702 pi centimeter squared per centimeter. So these are the kind of like the two kinds of questions they could ask, but I've just used like one little example here to show you the uh, two different ways they could potentially ask the question. Hey guys, that is basically it for this video. As always, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and of course, subscribe to keep up with the latest content. Uh, there should be some playlists popping up. Check them out. Good revision material. And as always, thank you for watching.